Hello and welcome to Catholic in America for this special episode where we're going to be talking with a Catholic priest and a Christian pastor about their theological views and understanding of the Christian faith. And so if you want to see people duke it out, this isn't the place for you. But if you want to see a good and healthy exchange between two Christians who love each other, please come back and join us. Hello again, and welcome to Catholic in America. So glad you're joining us uh, for this episode. And so I am your referee, Father Doug Martin, <laughs> if you will. So guys, no hitting below the belt. You know, let's play, have a fair fight here and, you know, touch hands and we'll go that's for good. it. All right. All right. There we go. All right. All right. And so this, uh, so just to, to kind of introduce everyone here, I'm joined by Father Michael Nixon and Pastor uh, Steve Taylor, who's a, a doctor as well. And so, well, a doctor in the faith. And so uh, if you would kind of tell us about who you, each of you are. I'll let you go first. Well, uh, <laughs> yes, my name's Steve Taylor. I have uh, been born and raised in Panama City, Florida here. Um, Baptist in background. I, I was debating whether do I tell them I'm Baptist or not. <laughs> uh, Father Michael and I have actually, we go back a few years at this point, and uh, I joke with people sometimes when they talk about the whether, whether you can have a, a good relationship with someone who's not of, of the same uh, denomination, et cetera. And I started off this way. Uh, I heard a story uh, talking about a Catholic priest and a Baptist pastor going into a Jewish deli and having lunch together. Well, that beginning of a joke, it, which would lead to a punchline, is the reality of what the way that Father Michael and I met. And uh, we have had some discourse over time. Uh, I would never actually come on a show like this uh, and duke it out <laughs> with a, with a yeah. fellow brother, but I'm more than happy with somebody I feel comfortable with to be able to talk about uh, what we as, uh, I guess, Christians believe and how that maybe compares with what uh, Catholics believe. So I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's really exciting and, and love having uh, Dr. Steve Taylor here, who's a, just a giant in the community as, as a pastor, has an amazing, amazing church, um, lot, lots of great people who, uh, he, who he works with. And so a, a real joy uh, to be here with him. I've been here in Panama City, not as long as, as, as Steve. I've been here only nine years uh, serving here, here at a parish, but we, we, we've gotten to know each other through those years. And uh, yeah, it's a joy. It's, it's, it's a joy to be here and to be able to have this conversation. So for, for anyone who immediately is, is concerned about this or whatever, like just, just enjoy the ride. It's, 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 it's yeah. going to be good. And, and, and hopefully we can just share the reason why we are, we're here because of Jesus, really. Exactly. Yeah, just just a civil conversation between two two friends, two two brothers in the faith, well, and we get to share our kind of our differences. I think to put people at ease as well. Very seldom do you get to see people with opposing viewpoints that they. I mean, there's certain things that we have really strong convictions about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but almost lost is the day that that two men um, can can with diplomacy. Uh, okay. and encouragement towards one another, actually have a conversation about facts. And so right. uh, it's good that we can do that. Hopefully we can demonstrate it. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Well, I mean, I, I think that's indicated by, of course, they wouldn't have seen it off camera, but indicated by we prayed together before we started. Did. And I thought that was a, a really beautiful thing for us to be able to do. Um, and so so we're just going to kind of cut right into this, um, if, if we could. And so what we'll do is, is there'll be a question that each person will be able to, to be asked and answered. And um, no real debate here, just us sharing where we're coming from and what our understanding of the faith is. And so, uh, so the first question would be, who is Jesus to you? Well, it's a great question. It's a question that uh, that I, I guess I've ex expressed a number of times over the years, hopefully weekly, daily. Um, but Jesus Christ, based on what I understand of the scriptures, is the Son of God. He died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay the penalty, like to purchase by his blood sacrifice, uh, our, uh, purchase us by his sacrifice and pay for our sins uh, so that we can have a place with him in heaven if we receive uh, the gift that he has so lovingly provided. And so um, basically Jesus is the Son of God that the Bible uh, told us was, was coming. They looked forward mm. to a Messiah in the Old Testament. He actually, uh, the story in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is that he came. Here's his life that he lived, birth to resurrection, right? And then the rest of the New Testament describes him uh, in, in relationship to how we should live in light of who he was. And so I guess that, that's who I see Jesus as, the Messiah, Lord and Savior. All right. Yeah. Right. And um, I, I agree with everything you said, which is good. You know, we need to get more disagreement. We'll get to some disagreements. Yeah. But, but definitely, I, I would say just 
um, from my own experience of that as well, as someone in, in my family did not grow up, um, we, I wasn't born a Christian, wasn't, wasn't born Catholic. We, we didn't have, um, we were actually, when I was born, we were Hindu. Uh, we were, and, and so we had, uh, didn't have uh, an understanding of Jesus. And my family, when we converted through my dad's conversion, which happened, long story there, my dad met the Lord in prison um, and uh, encountered Jesus for the first time. And, and so recognizing in a very real way what it means to not know the Lord um, and, 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 then, and then to know him. So Jesus, for me, being the Savior, uh, I, I have the great privilege in my, my own life and experience of knowing my life with and without him and, and being able to see that, that, the difference that he makes, that all of a sudden now, because he's my Savior, because he's my Lord, Lord meaning that every part of my life is, is, under, is under him, is, is, is not, I'm no longer in control. And there's, there's a great freedom in that. Um, and because he is who he says he is. he is, he is God, he is the word made flesh, God in the flesh. Um, so experiencing that too, uh, that I, I've had the great privilege of experiencing Jesus in the midst of suffering, in the midst of, of those places of brokenness and those places of, of, of darkness, that even especially there, he's, he's Emmanuel, God with us. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it, it makes all the difference in the world to know that even at my worst moments, um, even in those darkest times of my life or the times of, of like, people that I love, that 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 the Lord is with us, and that He uh, because because He loves us, and because He mm-hmm. saves us, and gives my life now a purpose. Because because I know Jesus, everything I do now ha- has a purpose and a direction. Not just because I'm, I'm a priest and a pastor, um, but because I'm following Him. Which that that's really the, the greatest adventure. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Good. Thank you, guys. So you, you said uh, we need to get into something a little bit more controversial yes. and all that. So we're, we're about to I, I right didn't say now. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're about to right now, and it's funny. It's just the second question that we're already sure. starting to come into experience. Maybe some, some different ways we view this. And so the question is, is what is your view of salvation? Mm. And specifically speaking, are we saved by faith or works? And so would you mind starting? Absolutely, Yeah. So when people ask me how are you saved, you know, um, I say we're saved by the death of Jesus on the cross. We're saved by, by, by God sending his son to die for us. That's not something we did that we, we, we got enough grace points where God's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you guys. Um, it's totally unmerited. It, it's, it, in a sense, God shows that to us by the most horrific action that was ever um, committed by humanity, which is the crucifixion of Jesus, which we all participated in by our own sin in a very real way. Um, that God uses that to be the means by which we're saved, just to show us how unmerited this is, how 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 it's it's something that um, is it comes out of out of the most horrific moment, and yet somehow God uses that because it's united to the heart of God. It's not just one tragic moment to, that, that happened two thousand years ago. This is the moment, really, the center of the universe and the center of history um, is Jesus Christ, not only experiencing that, experiencing the punishment of sin, of sin, experiencing the pain of that, but really revealing to us who God is. And so salvation um, within that is, is um, both faith and works. I have faith in that, and that is, is manifest, is lived out in the, the charity, the way that I live the love of Jesus as well. Um, so when we talk about, you know, um, moments of, because ju- you, you can get into kind of like the nuances of justification and the nuances of, of you know, justification, sanctification, and all those sorts of things. I'll let my friend with a doctorate um, un- unpack all those. <laughs> oh, <boy>. <laughs> <laughs> unpack those for us. No pressure. Um, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. In, in the Catholic understanding, I'd be happy to. <laughs> in, in, in the Catholic understanding, um, uh, we, we, would, we would not generally say, though you could say with a certain understanding that you're saved, you know, uh, by faith alone, which is yeah. usually, the, we wouldn't, wouldn't generally say it that way. Um, but we would say we're, we're saved by, by grace, by God's love for us. We put our faith in that, and, and we do that by, by baptism. We do that by what Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you by becoming one flesh with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Um, so we wouldn't consider those works, you know, like, you know, I wouldn't consider baptism or the Eucharist a work because it's a work of God, ultimately, that we participate in. But our life of charity is part of this, too, and I think that, that, that's important, too, that it's not something kind of a nice aside or a nice addition. It's, it's intrinsically united to that. Uh, the way I live my life, the way I treat the poor, the way I treat, as Jesus says, in the judgment of the nations, you know, the imprisoned, the naked, um, what I did for them or didn't do for them um, is, is what I did for Jesus or didn't do for him. So, so I would say it's always a Catholic both and. It's, 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 it's faith, it's faith and, and not works of the law, as St. Paul would say, but, but, but that, that life of charity as well. Yeah. Okay. 
My turn? Your yes. turn. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I think that we, we do share so much in common. Um, everything you said about Christ and his coming being the central, uh, most important part of history and what he did for us at the cross is incredible. Um, I also will I suggest that as we give answers, um, I know you to be a guy that really, uh, and I don't want to speak for you, but you really do value the traditions and the mm. role of traditions. But you also, obviously sitting before you, you've got a copy of the, of, of the scriptures. Uh, as, as do I. Um, I spent, have spent my, really all my studies have been about the scriptures themselves. And I also appreciate the traditions, but you'll find, as in, even in our answers, you'll find that I'm going to emphasize the text. And I think mm -hmm. typically there's some balance there, but you're going, there's going to be some emphasis on tradition. So what I'm trying to articulate is what I see the scriptures um, themselves describing. So uh, when you say faith or works, absolutely unmerited favor of God, that's a definition of grace. We agree. Um, and that it's by grace through faith. One of the, the proof texts, as you will, and proof texts probably are kind of weak at times because we know that the Bible is in its entirety and not in snippets. Um, but Ephesians, when Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus in chapter 2, 8 and 9, he says, by grace you've been saved um, through faith. It's not that of yourselves. It's a gift of God and not of works so that mm -hmm. no man can boast. And what I love about that text is it's really direct, right? It, but, but unfortunately, we sometimes miss verse 10. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Um, I do believe that our salvation is completely a work of God. Um, and we can all debate, like, what is in relationship to the response of man and obedience and that kind of thing. I mean, there has to be a response of man to the work of God. Mm. But verse 10 of Ephesians 2 describes us being uh, created in Christ Jesus by God um, with works for the purpose of works. Like literally this grace that he's provided that, it, that we've expressed faith in and are now saved, there's now, because he created us in Christ, there's some things that we're to be about. Um, and so literally we often miss this, even in the Great Commission that we talk about, which is Matthew 28. Uh, it says, go make disciples to baptize them. Uh, and then it says, and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. Again, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not trying to shed mm -hmm. shadows or light on my own um, group of folks, like denominationally, mm -hmm. but the reality is that as a result of this choosing Christ, there is a natural response. And I think the difference that we have, if I'm trying to point it out, I would suggest that the response of works is a result of the inward change and the new nature that Paul speaks about in Corinthians that we have when Christ is in us. Uh, and so I got to, I know I can't talk the whole time. So, uh, but, but like literally in, in, in my church, I've been going through the book of first John. And so literally yesterday we looked at first John chapter two, verse one through six. And it talks about Jesus as our advocate, Jesus and, and, and who is the righteous, uh, and him as our propitiation. He paid the debt for our sin. Mm. But then it says that if you know Jesus in verse six, it says that person ought to walk as he walked, to live as he lived. And so a person that does not have a life that's reflective in how they do life and work, like their pattern uh, of that Jesus inside, that's a problem. So works uh, related to t loving the poor, um, treating one another the way that we should, living according to the Ten Commandments, all that I would say is a result of um, the grace that's been provided in which we have salvation. And the works is a reflection of that. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Hey guys, thanks for checking out Catholic in America. I'm Father Michael Nixon, and I like to party. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Father Tom Dillon, uh, priest here in the Diocese of Pensacola, Tallahassee. I think I have the longest hair in the, probably the state, and uh, I too like to party. I like whiskey and cigars. Father Doug Martin. I'm also a priest here in the Diocese of Pensacola, Tallahassee, and I'm married and roll tide. Oh my goodness. Uh, yes, sir. Um, <laughs> I was okay with the being married part. The real tie thing. <laughs> in Catholic in America, we engage the intersection between faith and culture. Tune in every week because no topic is out of bounds. We want to thank you so much for supporting this show by watching it, by liking, sharing, and subscribing. How else can they support the show? You can also become a patron on Patreon and support us financially. So if you support us, there's all kinds of swag. There's t-shirts, there's coffee mugs, or maybe bumper stickers. I don't know, maybe we could come up with a wig from Father Tom. <laughs> Father Tom wig would go, go a long way. So thanks for your support. God bless y'all and check us out next time on Catholic in America.
I'm hoping that you're enjoying this as much as I am. And if you are, if you would, please like, share, and subscribe, and maybe even hit that little bell if you're watching on YouTube. That way others can enjoy the content that we have here. And then also, if you would like to sponsor this program or the programs that we have through St. Dominic Media, if you would, just go to Patreon and support us in that way. We would really appreciate that. And so now we, we kind of move into the next thing. And I know these questions are, are things that have been, you know, talked about over the centuries. There's there's volumes yeah. and volumes yes. of books written. Yes. And so for us to sit here and think for it's five complex. or ten minutes, we're going to answer questions, you know, to someone's satisfaction. Probably not going to be not going <laughs> to no. happen. But <laughs> we're opening a can of worms. We really are for people to really do make comments and say, what are they talking about? As soon about? as you say something, there's all the stuff you didn't but, say. Hey, so, yeah, if, yeah, if we drive them back to the scriptures, absolutely, then we're good. Maybe even we're the good. history, it's not. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll take that. As, so. as you were saying at the beginning, if all they heard was that opening thing where you talked about who Jesus is to us, yeah, and then you, yeah. you lost interest at that point, that's fine. Go yeah, ahead, yeah, go ahead, yeah. And, yeah, that, yeah that's, just that's the most important. Think thing. about <laughs> it even more. Yeah, that's right. But so that's many right. are going to stay and watch us duke it out. That's, that's right. Great. That's right. Yeah, we have so. <laughs> so all right. So so the next question is, and this is again is a, a very important thing. So it's one thing that really does divide us so much. Is um, is the Bible the the source of authority? Is Ooh. the Bible the ultimate source? Of authority, yeah. and so if you wouldn't mind starting. Well, I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I, some of these questions, like I almost want to rephrase it. That one, I, yes. Um, yeah. In 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 my view, um, God has given us uh, what we have is the Holy Scriptures as um, His love letter to us, but it's also His revelation of Himself to us. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus was the living revelation of Christ, but the Scriptures are the best. Uh, and really the authoritative image, according to what the apostles even have given us, uh, of, of how he described himself. And so it tells us about his life, who he was, how he lived, uh, what we, our views of God should be. God defines himself literally in the scriptures. Um, and so the scriptures themselves describe it as being profitable for, for doctrine, for correction. And, um, but it also shares with us, uh, I believe, what is required for salvation. So the short answer uh, from from this Baptist preacher would be yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And uh, so from this Catholic preacher, the, uh, <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yeah. The um, I, 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 I'm, I mean, I'm going to be broken record. Uh, yes, and so that the Bible, as 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 the living Word of God, which is living and effective, you know that 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 is sharper than any two edged sword, is a revelation of the Word, which is Jesus. So as Christians, uh, the, that we're not people of the book, we're people of the Word, who is a person. And and that, that the, the and and so the recognition that the Bible as we have it now compiled and everything else took years um, to be compiled and that's okay. Um, this is the apostolic, you know, particularly the New Testament is the is is the, the testimony of the apostles, those who knew, knew Jesus, walked with him. Luke is someone who 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 walked with those apostles um, as well. Um, and so recognizing that that this is a an unfolding of God's heart for us. And any any and every time you go to the Bible. Um, you're experiencing the word of God being spoken into your life as a and, and, and any theology you do, any apologetics, any church planning you do has to come from here. Yeah. <laughs> has to come from here. Mm -hmm. as, as a Catholic, the understanding kind of the both and within that is the Bible comes from the heart of, of what Jesus established, which is the church. Mm -hmm. that, that Jesus established a church, um, the gates of hell won't prevail against it. And the church, with the authority that's in, in that, what you bind and loose on earth is bound and loose in heaven, um, the, that, that comes as, as Jesus' is spirit breathed reality. Now, that's difficult because the church is made up, you know, you know we don't see the heavenly uh, uh, bride in all her glory. We see the, the you know, the awful, you know, the, the, uh, the bruised and battered and, 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 and broken oh, yeah. version of that. But yet that God still works through his church. So even us understanding the books that are, are, are here in the Bible that are the inspired uh, books of the Bible and those that aren't um, when the canon was formed and everything else, that comes to us from the church. So I, I think it's important for, for us to recognize that, yes, this is the inspired word of God that comes from the heart of the church. So we talk about authority, we'd say that the church has authority not to change what's in here, not to change doctrines and dogmas. And that, that's, not, that's not the prerogative of the church, um, of the pope or anyone else. Um, we, the, the pope can't change revelation. The pope can't, add, we can't add to revelation. Revelation died, you know, uh, 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 public revelation that chapter closed the death of the last apostle. Um, so we, we recognize that, but that God continues to speak in, author in an authoritative way through, through his church. That, that, that's what we, we would say. So the, the teaching authority of the church, the magisterium, um, is an important aspect of, of, of following Jesus too. Yeah, good. 
Yeah, thank you guys for that. Yeah, it's really good, and, and it's good to hear hear the kind of the the difference. But again, the similarities. I mean, how how close we are on on these things, and yet sometimes it feels like we're we're so far away. So. Um, I think both of us could have like 20 minute rebuttals of, oh, and, and ads on, but we're okay, we're gonna keep moving. Yeah, yeah, keep easily. Moving. I mean, yeah, look. But we don't want to mimic a, uh, a political debate, right? That's Where right. they talk That's over right. each other. That's yeah. right. Well, I mean, you know, look, I mean, I, I've seen on, on YouTube and other places these topics being one thing and, and, and it's two, three, four hours. I've, I mean, yeah. you know, your so, audience ain't gonna listen. Yeah, no, that, 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 we would enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and it's kind of conversations we've had outside of here, so I'm sure. Yeah. So, um, so then, so if you would to answer this, and then we'll come back sure. to you, uh, Steve. Um, do you believe Catholics are guilty of idolatry for Ooh. worshiping or venerating statues and images? And and I started with you on purpose so that you could state it, and so that uh, you know Pastor Taylor, and Pastor that, Steve, thank could, you. could respond. So that it wouldn't be you saying your p- opinion and him rebutting you. Mm-hmm. So no rebuts here, just a sharing of our views. Thank you Absolutely. for not not giving me a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> so so. <laughs> Do you believe that Catholics are guilty mm. uh, for uh, of idolatry, for worshiping, or for venerating statues and images? Yeah, I would say if if a Catholic ever were to worship to worship uh, um, a, a, an image or a statue, then yes. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as far as uh, uh, as far as the, the veneration of images or the importance of images, um, that's something actually in the church. There's been a long history of of um, both the the practice of veneration of images, and we'll talk about what we mean by that and the reaction against that. The iconoclasm mo- movement, which really happens in the seventh and eighth centuries in the church, which is actually is influenced largely by the, the growing spread of Islam um, in, in the, you know, the, the Near East. So Christians, in a sense, you know, uh, the Byzantine Empire trying to have some credibility with, with their, their neighbors um, the, who were abhorrent of any and all images, any and all depictions of God or the mm-hmm. saints or even of Jesus, um, uh, who they revere, you know, the, the Muslims revere as a prophet. So there was a, a, a movement towards wiping out any and all images. But in the history of the church, uh, the use of images in prayer, the use of images in the liturgy and our public worship has always been there as, as an icon, meaning, and, and they would see that as kind of a window into what's happening in heaven. So since God became flesh, the word became flesh, that's, this reality um, has, a, uh, in the work of our hands, in, 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 in that sense, has a special power behind it. Has a special when we see when you see a work of art, there's something transcendent about that and beautiful. And so, being able to to experience that and say that this is helping me to pray, just like a song is, I'm not I'm not I'm not worshiping the song when I'm listening to a song that's 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 you know uh, that's a beautiful treatment of just praise or even a symphony or something like that, it's moving me to, into a deeper encounter with the Lord. So art has that, that potential and that opportunity. Now, if I make the song the point, if I make the artistic form the point, if I stop there in a sense, mm-hmm. then yes, that, that would be a, in a sense an area of idolatry. Um, but for us as Catholic Christians, we have a long tradition of art um, and using art within within veneration. Now, uh, we would always differentiate too, and this gets into um, our understanding of of veneration of the saints, of those who are in, or are before the face of God, those who intercede for us, mm-hmm. and that's always different than the devotion and worship that we have for God Himself. There's, you know, we can get into the 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 uh, the dulia and the hyperdulia and the right. latria, latria, right. which is for God alone. Um, but anyway, yes. So I would say it can happen, but it doesn't have to happen, and it can be, and it is, it is for me an important part of my own my own life of prayer too. I have certain images of the Lord of Jesus that I reflect on, um, stations of the cross that you pray with, and they help me. Not, and I understand this is wood and plaster. This isn't this isn't anything in and of itself, except right. that it's it's it, it's one person's prayerful depiction of of the Word made flesh. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So so I don't feel comfortable um, in the idea of condemning a Catholic doctrine per se. Does that make sense? So sure. what I'd rather do is I'd rather actually speak from my own understanding like scripturally. Perfect. What, what, I would, what I would say is that um, traditionally, obviously the Protestant church, the Baptist church has been very uncomfortable with the concept. A lot of that goes back um, to the Old Testament. It goes back to the, how they dealt with um, uh, idols and sacrifices mm. that were made to other gods. And there was a pretty stringent view there of complete removal of all that. Um, another piece of this, and maybe it's a practical piece in some ways, um, is that as things get larger, like the church as a group, 
over years and time and continents, there's a tendency as it scales up for it to get way more complicated. And if I'm just giving perspective, like I don't have a bunch, I, like I've been to one mass and it was because you invited me at the 100th year anniversary <laughs> on a Saturday. And it was fascinating to me. Like I'm, I just yeah. don't have that background. Sure. Uh, Cause I'm literally, I've been a, a, a Baptist my entire life. So yeah. um, it, the reality for me is the words like venerate, I have a good concept of what that means, mm -hmm. but it's, 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 it's kind of, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, like from an intellectual level, although I know it can be meaningful. So if I'm talking about like how we practice that, is I view the scriptures, and I think we may talk about baptism soon, but when we talk about the symbolism, there's a lot more of that that I see in the mm. practice within the Catholic Church. On our end of it, it, it we, I'm constantly trying to take it back to the simplicity of the, the original apostles and what they said, because I think over the years, and I think you would agree, there's been a lot of abuse in how things are viewed, mm -hmm. and I mean, we could, you could give a variety of different examples. So. Um, I would say that we have two symbols that are incredibly important that are directly from Scripture. The one is the, we call it communion or Lord's Supper. I think you call it the Holy Eucharist that we celebrate. Again, the, we would describe the symbol of the body and blood of Christ. You would, I think, have a kind of a literal view of that. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, the sacrifice is the picture of what he did. And then the other is baptism, which is a symbol of burial and resurrection. So those are symbols um, but the modern view of some of that, we don't give a lot of authority to it. I think that there is oftentimes, when I talk with people about prayer beads or praying to Mary or different saints, I, I think they do confuse it. Mm -hmm. um, I think you've got a clear view of it. Um, anyway, that's, I, that's my view yeah. of it. And I, yeah. think, I think some of the yeah. challenges around it. Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you for that. No, no, yeah. Yeah, don't, you know, don't feel like you're going to offend anyone. Well, no, you, know, I, say, I, you got you viewers on both sides. Yeah, <laughs> I, know, you do. I know, I know. And, and I don't blame you. I mean, I, I, I like being diplomatic myself with things, but, but I think you, yeah, you stated it very clearly, and I appreciate that. So, so to you, and then we'll yes. go to, to, to Father here. Our next question is, is, is confessing your sins to a priest necessary? Oof. So, so th this is fun. Uh, so, so let me go to the scripture because it's, it's all I know to do. Sure, sure. Uh, in the book of Hebrews, uh, it was a letter written to the he, Hebrews is a Bible a book of the Bible. It's in the New Testament, and so um, it was a, a, a Bible, a, a book of the Bible that was written to a group with a Jewish background. Yeah. And essentially, if you look at the overarching themes of that book of the Bible, the idea is that Jesus was a better sacrifice. Mm. than the sacrificial system of the Old Testament, right? The whole image is that Jesus, and Jesus himself mm -hmm. said, I am the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Mm. So, and I think we actually would agree that all the Old Testament looked forward to the New Testament yeah. and the sacrificial system, Jesus was the picture. So it also describes him not only as being a better sacrifice, but a better priest. Mm -hmm. um, and it describes him in the order, uh, the priest in the order of Melchizedek, but the concept is that he is now one that opens up the door for us in my own theology and understanding of doctrine and our access to God, in the Old Testament, they had no access to the Holy of Holies, right, in the temple. But when Christ was crucified at that moment, and I know you're familiar with it, the, the veil was torn in the temple uh, from top to bottom. That's one of those places where I believe the scriptures actually give us the symbolism that Jesus gave, which is there is now access to the Father. So uh, access to him, and we may even agree on this, is not, it doesn't require a priest um, and I would go as far as to say that in Peter himself, as he wrote the letter of 1 and 2 Peter, he described us as a kingdom of priests. And Amen. so as the Holy Spirit, and this may be too much, but like uh, the incarnation is huge in Catholic life. It is huge in, in Protestant life. Mm. And it's huge because of the being born without a sin nature, right? Mm. When, the whole, when a person chooses Christ, there is the idea of the incarnation of the Spirit within us. Like God... God his, his spirit indwells our heart and life, which is the very reason we believe that we can be uh, the dwelling place, not mm. the church, but the dwelling place of the spirit. And so that would be the reason that I would say when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name uh, through the, the intercessor who's the spirit of God, and it's not required that we go through a priest. I would say the Bible is clear in several places. There's value in one believer confessing <laughs> to another believer uh, their sin. If I get real like direct, We've learned in science that when a, when, when a person confesses, for instance, uh, a problem with pornography to another mm -hmm. man, like that they trust, right. it rewires their brain. Like there's mm -hmm. a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. And so as a general practice for forgiveness to be given, I wouldn't agree with that. Do I think it's a good practice among believers? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, be- beautiful. Um, I-, I wish we could have a whole show on Hebrews because that, that's, yeah. that's, oh man, there's, there's so much there. <laughs> it's it's um, just like yeah. you love the Bible like I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> we, we were talking once, you know, earlier. The, I, he I left that one outside to make it look I, more. I, I, know, I know, I know. He's read it more than you. That's a low blow. So <laughs> let ring a bell. Not below the bell. Man, man when the ref is doing it, that's yeah. what So the understanding of Jesus in giving to uh, the church this uh, the specific the access that comes from from the veil being being open that we're baptized into Christ Jesus that all that is his by 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 grace is, is ours by um, all that is his by nature is now ours by grace this so this access to the Father this this you know um, this being set free from the lies of sin you know holiness um, the gift of the Holy Spirit all that is now is now ours there's a special task and role of the church that's entrusted to the church. Of, for the forgiveness of sins. And we see that in, at, at the end of John's gospel, um, and the risen Lord comes into the upper room, um, and, and he, you know, the risen Lord, they're, they're terrified, they're scared. He comes in, he breathes on them, and the first thing he says is like, where the heck were you guys? No, he doesn't say that. He says, <laughs> he says peace be with you. Then he breathes on them, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. Right. There's, there's this, this reality that's, that's is, is obviously very close to the, the, the heart of Jesus' mission, especially in John's gospel here, um, of, of the forgiveness of sins. Now, does that, um, again, we'd always go to the, the, the Catholic both and. Mm-hmm. So the church has, has existed with the mission of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins, for people experiencing that liberation that comes from, I did this, I did this wrong, I, I, I sinned in this way, and I experience the 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 church we and we even in confession we say through the ministry of the church mm-hmm. you know um, through through the Father Son and Holy Spirit the gift of the Holy Spirit that's come through Jesus death and resurrection I absolve you from your sins so it's never something that the priest does as as like some sort of prerogative that you go to the priest because you can't go to Jesus um, but it is something intrinsically that's been entrusted to the church and the way that the church practices that through the ages and now um, really uh, since the 8th century in particular, it used to be a more corporate thing where you'd stand up in front of everybody and confess your sins beginning of the service in the, in the first, you know, second, third, and fourth century. Um, that's thank a, God that's, we've moved beyond yeah, that. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm okay without the public confessions. <laughs> um, <laughs> the internet does a good job for that for that's everybody right. now. Um, but that, that it becomes that person experiencing um, in a sacramental way, which is, which is something that happens in and through our senses, the words that the Lord desires to speak over them, which which is forgiveness. So I would say, I would say, the Lord forgives us, and the Lord also, and, and intrinsic to that is the ministry and the life of the church, which we see in the sacrament of confession. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, All and right. that's never apart from Jesus. It's never like the church has some sort of, you know, satellite power that we hold on to that you uh-huh. know of forgiving sins. Because yeah, we've got uh-huh. I myself have no authority, no power, no anything to help uh-huh. anyone. Um, and anyway, what to speak of, forgive them, you know, for, for the e- e- eternal ramifications of sin. But Jesus does, and he does that in and through his church, which is pretty great. Yeah, yeah, it is really great. So, yeah. All right, so we move to our next one. So, uh, Father Michael, if you'd start All here. Right. Uh, what do you believe about baptism? Okay. So remember, this is not the whole show. It's just this question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot we can say about that. Yeah. 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 So baptism is a sacrament of faith, and 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 so it's 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 united to our faith in Jesus Christ, um, by which a person is is united to Jesus in his death and resurrection. Um, so uh, you, you know, uh, letter Peter talks about that as as just as in in in, in the days of Noah, they went, you know they go in the ark, they go through the flood. And they're brought up. They're saved by that. So we're, we're, we're saved, by baptism, you, you are saved through this. And saved not because baptism is some sort of magical action in and of itself. It's because in and through this physical reality, which is sometimes, as, as Catholics, we're very comfortable with the, the physicality mm-hmm. of our faith, that we're not angelic beings, so that there's actual water, there's actual an actual head, an actual mm-hmm. body that's being baptized. There's actual words, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that, um, that we're united to Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. So we're, we're saved in and through that because of what it's doing is uniting us, us to the Lord. Um, and it's always connected to faith. When it happens with a baby, it's connected to the faith of the, the community and the family, um, just as a child would have been circumcised in the Old Covenant, that, that, uh, that someone um, would, would be baptized. But that faith always has to grow um, um, throughout their lives and, and just a life of discipleship. But yeah, but that it's in, 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 an intrinsic part of God's plan for us 
and, and salvation. So um, thank you, by the way, for yeah. sharing your perspective. I, I would say that, uh, and my view is going to differ a little from not just the Catholic view, but probably Episcopalian and several other Protestant churches that follow along the lines of infant baptism. Um, I said already in an earlier question that baptism for us is a public declaration of what God's done inwardly. Mm. Um, and so I would, what I would do is point for the concept of baptism, I would point to what uh, the pattern in the New Testament would be, right? So um, the concept of baptism, it's a, it's a Greek term that means to immerse, to place under, to dunk. Uh, in the New Testament, it was always done following a personal confession of faith. Um, you don't see, historically, you don't see an infant baptism there. It is true. And I hear a lot about like the covenant side of things, Old Testament covenant and circumcision and New Testament, the reflection of being a part of the body is baptism. My struggle with it is I never saw it practiced in the New Testament. It wasn't a practice that began until several hundred years, like after the time of the early church, et cetera. So historically, it's something that came to be, which makes tons of sense going back to the role of like the authority of the church that you've described. Um, here, I would say um, that sal the salvific characteristics, obviously it's, it's, it's by grace through faith, and so baptism is the symbol. Uh, a book like uh, the uh, Philippians, uh, it was a church that was started at a Bible study, the Apostle Paul in the city of Philippi, Lydia, right, the, the, the merchant of uh, uh, purple cloth, basically. She accepted Christ, she was baptized, and we have the story of that. Philip in the Ethiopian eunuch, he received Christ, uh, the eunuch did, he said, there's water, can I be baptized? We have the model of Jesus, and we could talk other places about how it's in the New Testament, but I think that mm -hmm. is the general difference that we have with it. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, so, so next question. Yeah, yeah again, that, that's one that, that it, it seems like a, a simpler answer, and, and you know, because we're just talking about that, but boy, the differences, we could well, go forever well, there's with 2000 the differences years of history, between right? that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, and, and speaking about history, um, were the first Christians Catholic? You know, <laughs> this, is a, this is a good question. It really yeah, yeah. is. And it's, yeah. uh, I knew this question was coming, so I yeah. looked at it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and even early on when, uh, when Michael and I would talk, uh, and he would describe the Catholic Church, and I, I was like, he said, you mind me calling you Protestant? I said, no, I don't mind being called Protestant at all. I just don't like there being a Catholic Church that I'm not in. Right? <laughs> like, and so so let, me, yeah, let me just yeah. give you, I only have three minutes, I just took two. So yeah. um, <laughs> the term Catholic, mm -hmm. if, and I'm not a Catholic guy, right? Mm -hmm. So I understand it to originally have meant universal, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think we both would agree that Jesus Christ, and I think this is one of those great places that we connect, through Holy Communion, you have the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. That is a, the, the modern church, like people that have by grace accepted Christ, like believers in Jesus, followers of Jesus, those are the body of Christ, like the New Testament mm. describes that. And so I know that the Catholic Church like traces all the lineage back to the early apostles. I would say that I also would claim to be a part of the body of Jesus Christ, uh, by grace and through faith. And so uh, I literally would say that um, I, they were Christians, they were part of the body. I'm not even sure that I'm as comfortable with Catholic and Christian. Like, yeah. like I'm really comfortable with disciple of Jesus, follower mm. of Jesus, sure. uh, one who considers Jesus master and Lord, because mm -hmm. uh, I want to learn and worship at his feet. And in that we can all connect. Uh, if we've chosen Christ. Right. Um, were they Catholic with a capital C? I would say no. Were they the church? with a capital C, like the body of Christ, mm. absolutely they were. Nice. Same to me? Yeah. Well, I thought yeah. you were going to ask me if the first Christians were Baptists. Oh, yeah. The, um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. So I would say, and, and again, I, I would... <laughs> Can I answer that question? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, um, j a, a lot of thoughts on that, that uh, the, the Catholicity of the church. Um, actually, the first time that, 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 that Catholic is used to describe the church comes from Ignatius of Antioch, so early, second century, um, which is interesting because Antioch is the first place where they're called Christians, as we know from Acts of the Apostles. It's, it, it says that. And then um, the bishop of, of, of Antioch, Ignatius, on his way to, to martyrdom, refers to the church as, as Catholic, as the Catholic church, meaning the universal church. So not, in a sense, there weren't denominations at that time. And I think yep. the the, the the recognition um, that we're 
500 years since you know the, the Protestant Reformation, we're 1,000 years since the, 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 the split between the Eastern and Western churches um, in year 1054. Um, we're so used to this way of, of, of relating to, to believers, of what denomination you are, um, it's, it, it really is a tragedy. I think that, you know, the Lord does pray for, he, he prays for unity, Father, that, that they might be one just as, just as we are one. Um, and, and the fact that we're not there is, is obviously uh, tragic. I would say as far as the, the beliefs and the practices of the liturgy and um, the way that they, they uh, exercise, they celebrate the Holy Eucharist, the way that in, in the early church, if you, if you took a time machine back to, and again, you go, go to Ignatius and go to Polycarp and go to Irenaeus, um, people that were disciples of, of John, disciples, you know, they were discipled by, by you know, the, 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 uh, the apostles of Jesus, that the way that they celebrated and, and lived their faith would be very similar to what we celebrate within the liturgy of the Catholic Church. Um, obviously, they didn't have a printed Bible at that time. They didn't have, you know, there was, they might have had access to, they had a scroll of Isaiah and they had, you know, uh, three of the letters of Paul and the Gospel of Matthew. And that's, and that's, that's what they, they came together, the scriptures that they read on a Sunday. And then they would, um, the breaking of the bread, which is an early term for the Holy Eucharist, um, the body of Christ. But the belief that the Eucharist is actually the body of Christ, the belief that, that, um, um, that um, in, in the church and in the mission of the church, I, I think would be would be similar to what we we celebrate within the Catholic Church. So I would see the consistency. I wouldn't I wouldn't say someone who is not a Catholic is outside of the body of Christ. If if they're if they're if they're a believer in Jesus, they're baptized into Him. Then can, then, I, can I cheer? Is this for? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> I, think I think he just said I'm saved. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but I think you've got to be careful uh, with that. Uh, I think oh, yeah. that, that, that term's no, 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 not good. Okay. Okay. Sorry. No, yeah, you're good. Thank you. But, Thank no, you. but it's a, it's, I think it is an important point to recognize yeah. that we're not yeah. in perfect communion right now, and that's yeah. what we long for. Yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. in, in, in imperfect communion, as, as the church has described it, between mm-hmm. um, Catholics and, and Christian believers of other denominations, um, that, that we're, we're still striving for. But in a sense, we are incorporated into Christ Jesus. Now, I, w- I would desire every single person to be fully C, you know, big C Catholic, um, in the sense that I want us all to, re- to, to come together at the Lord's Supper to receive Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and, and not to lose any of those great things of, of preaching the gospel and, and, and living the word and, every, and everything else that, that so often many non-Catholic brothers and sisters do much better than, than many Catholics. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's something that we're, 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 hopefully the Spirit is drawing us towards, um, but it's it's I, w- I would say the consistency in the history of the church is is uh, yes yeah. yes they were Catholic that's that's, that's, that's a, <laughs> yeah well, well thank you for that but and, I think they were yeah. madness they were mercy <laughs> mercy half church on that yeah. yeah so yeah well good well I think the end of your answer there kind of brings us to our last question that yeah. we want to discuss and I think it's a good way to kind of end our discussion together which is what are the things that unite us. And how do those things help us to feel that that you know that that yeah. connectedness to each other? So so what are the things that that kind of unite us, and then how does that connect us together? If I can start, I would Please. say that um, you know it is one of the places we failed historically is we talk in terms of concepts instead of actually talking to people. And mm. so for me to talk to Father Michael about the word and go back and forth. We can have a a civil discussion about how much we love, like there's something that is, is it okay to use the word attractive? It draws me to hear him talk about how much he loves Jesus, how much he loves the word, to hear him talk about the spirit of God, to hear him speak of scripture that that I read and feed off of, Um, that, that matters to me. Uh, if I talk about a group of people that are Catholic or they're Baptist or they're Protestant or they're not, that's different. But I, I guess that's part of why I was trying to eliminate the labels. Mm-hmm. Because if I can talk to another man or another individual about who, that we have, either we have Jesus in common or we don't, right? right? And so if we can agree on what the scriptures teach about that, that if that's there, the Bible teaches that gives us fellowship that is not just three guys sitting in a room and taping a show, it is three guys that have the Holy Spirit of God indwelling their heart and are connected in a way they never would have been otherwise. And like, I think we would agree, that's the most important connection. The second piece to that, and we talked about this off air, I think people truly do need to see that we 
are believers in Jesus Christ and that we love one another. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. John's gospel said in chapter 13, 13. They'll know that, that, that you're my disciples in this, that you love one another. We don't see that now. Right. And so I think Christians ought to, uh, people in general of faith ought to talk about Jesus and the Bible and love one another, love yeah. God and love one another. The rest of the stuff will work itself out. Yeah. yeah. And, and I would definitely um, say that uh, first time I met, I met uh, Pastor Steve was um, when he was hosting a group of pastors at, at your church. This seems yeah. like a million years ago. It does feel and, like a long time. And speaking mm -hmm. specifically, um, um, uh, uh, Steve Southern was speaking about persecution of Christians um, in yep. the Middle East and yes. what we as pastors uh, can be doing. So I, I, I walked into that definitely as the only, only Catholic <laughs> priest there. The record scratched yeah. and everyone turned. And I just remember the, uh, the, uh, the, the love mm -hmm. and care and hospitality that, 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 that you showed, Steve, which was such a, a, a tremendous uh, testimony to just who you are as a man of God and just as a brother in Christ. Um, but I think that's a good example of, of the recognition of man, of, man, the world is dying. The world is yep. dying. People are hurting so profoundly. Not even just out in the Middle East or just out in, in I was just reading uh, reports of, of, of priests being um, killed in, uh, in Nigeria right now. Um, just violence out in the world and, 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 and warfare. But there's people dying in our own community. And, and mm -hmm. we, have the, we, have, we have the only news that can save us. The only, mm -hmm. the only thing that can save us, which is, which is the gospel. The only, the only news, the only message, the only person. Um, it's not going to be a politician. It's not going to be any of these things. It's him. So if we're not serious about, about recognizing that, if, if, there's, if there's a brother or sister who, who knows that and who is living that in their own way, then I have to be encouraging to them. Um, and, and so I think that, that that's something that, that we need to, uh, to, to, to cling to, especially in these really challenging times. Now, the theological conversations, the differences in understanding of the Eucharist and baptism and, and justification, all those things are really important. And, and this is not to negate any of that, because those are important. Those Agreed. are worthy conversations. Um, but fundamentally recognizing that Jesus is the Savior, and if we've been saved by him, then we're, we're, we're now mandated, commanded, commissioned, and empowered to be part of that saving mission. And we get to do that together, which I think is, is, is tremendous. As two pastors um, in, in a town that's seen a lot of, of, of destruction in the past yep. couple, you know, several years, we experienced going through COVID, we recognize that, that, that we need to be a support to each other. It's really easy to criticize other people, even in your own church, you know, what to speak of across denominational lines. It's easy, but man, that's so boring. That is so <laughs> the antithesis of yeah. the spirit of God. Yep. Um, yeah. so, uh, so the more that we can do, have these kind of conversations and love and encourage each other, the better. Yeah, yeah, and especially in a world that just seems so divided now, and, and even more polarized and divided. I mean, you know, you, you look at history and you look back and to the history books, and you see all this polarization and division that's happened. And it seemed like we, we were overcoming some of that to a certain extent, but now it seems like it's really just happened again. And, and conversations like this needs to happen more often, rather than us shouting from our from our positions, from our you know, with the with the gulf between us, we're on our own mm -hmm. hills. Rather than shouting, but coming down and uniting together and getting to meet each other. Uh, I think this is a great thing. And I hope you've enjoyed this conversation as well. Wanted to thank Dr. Steve Taylor for being with us. And then, of course, Father Michael Nixon for being here as well. My name is Father Doug Martin. Thank you for joining us on Catholic in America. Please like, share, and subscribe. And share this with your friends so that others can see this great conversation that happened. And we'll see you again and real soon.